This is One on One. We are talking sports injuries, everything you also need to know about orthopedics with uh, our good friend, Dr. Vincent McInerney, who is orthopedic surgeon and director of sports medicine at Seton Hall University. Uh, doctor, let me ask you this. Um, we've seen each other a lot of basketball games, particularly Seton Hall University basketball games, and you've dealt with all kinds of athletes, all kinds of injuries. Are there more sports injuries than ever before, or are they being detected more than ever before? I think it's a combination of both, Steve. Uh, there are more. Our players are bigger in basketball, taller, faster. And there have been some rules changes over the years, or at least lack of reinforcement of them, particularly with dribbling. And if you see that, people palm the ball. They'll run maybe five or six steps. Sometimes you and I count them. And we know that they're not exactly three. Uh, the speed and the uh, ability to play is different. If you remember the old days with the Boston Celtics, you know, John Havlicek dribbling down the court. And he had to look at the ball. You can't dribble the ball the way you and I were taught without looking at it. Now players can palm it and be looking all around the court and running with the ball. Very different speed. I think you and I both recognize that. If we looked at the old films and now we'd say there's a difference. So I think rules changes play a lot in that as well as the size and the agility of the players. But in terms of even younger athletes, all right, those of us who have uh, children who are involved in, in youth sports, we're very conscious of the potential for injury. But what is it that we could or couldn't do, should or shouldn't be doing as parents while not micromanaging the process to the point where we don't let them do anything in sports? Well, I think that uh, what I would suggest to you is that we can do things. Parents have a great say in the rules and regulations, and we've allowed them to get lax. I'm particularly uh, nervous about young women, uh, young girls. Uh, soccer. Uh, soccer right now with all the heading it's not just a seasonal sport that you and I played. We'd stop and then move ahead to another sport. They play year-round. And the subconcussive injuries to the head are incredible, particularly in women. They don't have the neck strength. In many categories, women are stronger than men. About 80% of the time, I hate to tell you this, but 20%. I'm not surprised. 20%, 20, 20 <laughs> they're, they're actually not very good. And that's with their head and neck, the concussion, and with knee injuries. So just focusing on head and neck, we just had our New Jersey Athletic Trainers meeting this Sunday and Monday. And uh, we had several talks about the brain, billions of cells and trillions of connections, how delicate it is. And yet we're allowing it to be struck on a repetitive nature, m much more than you and I ever had. So parents can say, no, we're not going to allow it. We are going to help get legislation if we need to, or go to governing bodies to say, you need to change the rules. Young children should chest the ball. No headers. They get, can get chest protectors if they want on them. You get hit in the head, if it's totally accidental, if someone kicks the ball and you just couldn't get out of the way. But if you do head it, you'd be out of the game. So that, those are things that we can do to help. But Vince, I gotta tell you, I was watching, I don't wanna out any particular um, parents or, or, or media entities, but there was, I was watching a, a sports program. It was a program about youth football. Uh, you know the program I'm talking about. And I'm watching these kids bang the heck out of each other. And they were looking at it like it was helmet to helmet. And it is this Friday night show that they were doing. These kids were killing each other. The parents and the coaches were like, go at each other, go at each other. And these kids were getting knocked out. And the parents and the coaches were pushing them to get back in. I was hoping, I think it was down in Texas or it was in the southern part of the country. I'm, this is nothing negative about the South in particular. But that's got to be the exception. I'm praying and hoping it is. It is to a certain extent. In the southern areas, football is king. And there's Friday night lights, the things of that nature. And the parents lose it. They're going vicariously through their children. They, they can't do that anymore. They need to, children need to be empowered to say, I don't want to do that. But these are kids that are 10 years old. All wrong. Kids love to play touch football and flag football. If you put them together, they'd rather do that. I can tell you this. We've done that. We've, we've asked children. They don't like to get hit in the head. It, it hurts. It's not fun. It's bad. And it does. it is detrimental to these young children in the developing brain. They even had information on about marijuana mm. the other day about how bad it is, the American Pediatric Association said, because of the developing brain. Well, look what we're doing with concussive injuries. That's incredible. We never had anything like that. Those rules need to be changed. I was taking care of the Boston Bruins, 81-82, with Bert Sarens and Carter Rowe. Uh, God rest Carter's soul. Wonderful people up in Boston. I was training up there, and there were no helmets. People said, well, 
you're going to ruin the game if you put on helmets. Best thing that ever happened to hockey was helmets. Maybe because they couldn't see the players. Yeah, well, that's true. They couldn't see their face, you know. But but it was not it was not right. And these people are, are are hurt for life. Their families are destroyed. Everything else by these concussive injuries. So concussions are real. They're dangerous. They can be stopped. Mm -hmm. Talk about football. Get rid of the kickoff. Fifty percent less injuries in the NFL now. Because of the speed at which the people on the kickoff team are coming at those who are on the receiving team and the collisions that take place. Absolutely. And the players will even tell you they'd rather not even have the kickoff because you don't even need it. It's one, one of the most dangerous plays in any sports anywhere. But the NFL does it because? It's popular. It looks interesting. It's, they've made some changes, though. They realize that now it really needs to be changed. So there's 50% less kickoffs. Therefore, there's 50% less injuries. The study predicted exactly what you and I would have predicted. You don't run it back, you don't get hurt. So this is not part of the game that should be going on there. <sighs> Talk about the importance of medical education. Um, we're here at MD Advantage taping this. <clears throat> they are very much involved in the EJI, Edward J. Hill Awards. Um, medical education is, is, is a major focus. Uh, scholarships for medical students. Talk about the importance of medical education. Well, medical education now is changing rapidly, as you and I can, can guess with the evolving uh, technology. And we are able to do things uh, virtual reality. We don't need to have necessarily a cadaver lab. You do it in virtual reality. Some of your surgeries are being trained that way with robotics and other, uh, other methods. Yesterday, we did four robotic surgeries mm -hmm. on knees and hips up at St. Joseph's uh, Hospital and, and Regional Medical Center in Patterson. It is changing orthopedics. Absolutely, game changer. The precision of the cuts that we make now. It's like an old fashioned diamond cutter who cuts the diamond perfectly. You can almost not even see anything. We cut it again perfectly with the robotic surgery. It's that precise. Same prosthesis goes in, but the cuts are so precise and we believe that this is gonna lead to great longevity uh, in, uh, in uh, the total joint arena. But also in other er areas that we have, we have stem cells are coming. They're, they're here. There they're are ways we're doing it gently now. We're still trying to figure out exactly when to do it platelet-rich proteins, those are the PRP injections people get. Again, slowly coming, but it's, it's here. We're going to be creating organs. We're going to be growing ligaments. This is exciting. This is a wonderful area. The technology is terrific. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Steve. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, New Jersey Resources, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, Fedway Associates, the New Jersey Reentry Corporation, and by Choose New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.